No matter where you are around the world today, there's a good chance that you've felt the pinch of inflation. As a matter of fact, it's almost guaranteed. Since 2020, we've seen a massive rise in the price of goods, with the average prices soaring over 20% in the last four years. This is a huge increase in prices that has a noticeable effect on our pocketbooks. A 20% rise in prices means that if you were making $50,000 a year four years ago, that same level of earnings is now worth about $40,000, increasing the pressure to decrease our spending or increase our income. A 2023 survey conducted by payroll.org showed that 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. The same survey conducted in 2022 found that this number was 72%. This number tells us that Americans were already struggling to make ends meet before the inflation crisis, but have also failed to adjust to the new reality of the world. Now, more than ever, we need to take a good hard look at how we're spending our money before things take a turn for the worse. So let's talk through what you can do to combat the inflationary issue today. We also need to be wary of inflation and inflationary pressures that could rise in the future. Let me show you how you can hedge yourself from future inflation and make sure your money is working for you. When dealing with inflation, the first place we need to look at is our spending. Yes, the world is a more expensive place to live now, but I've talked to many people and seen their budgets as well. It's still very possible to make your money work on the average American salary. If you've pursued finance TikTok and social media lately, you'll see many talking heads claiming that it's impossible to live comfortably on the average American salary anymore. Many of these commentators simply have an extreme view of what's needed for comfort in this country. And they include luxuries such as car payments and expensive rents in expensive cities. Unfortunately, that's a part of the reason we're in this predicament, even though the United States is one of the richest countries in the world. You can build a plan that will ensure that you can spend within your means and save adequately for your future. One of the areas that has seen the largest increase due to inflation is food and groceries. Supermarket prices are now 25% higher than they were in 2020. As a result, you'll need much more money to afford the same basket of groceries as you did back then. And if you're like me or most Americans, you probably like to eat out, in which case you're really feeling the pinch. But many Americans aren't aware that there's a bunch of common money techniques you can employ to save on your groceries. As a matter of fact, I cover how you can eat sustainably for less than $300 per adult in the household in my budgeting program called Master Your Money. Here are some of the tips that I shared. First, you need to plan your meals. Planning your meals simply means less waste, and less waste equals less money. You buy the ingredients that you need and leave with all that extra crap. If you aren't sure what you plan to eat, that's how you end up with rotten broccoli at the end of the month or a freezer full of food that you never eat. Next, buy in bulk. You can save here and there by buying larger quantities of items. Buy the three pound tube of ground beef instead of the one pound. You'll likely save a few dollars there, and the more items you buy in bulk, the better. When it comes to groceries, it's the cost of the total basket of items that looks high, not always the cost of the individual item. But if you're to buy in bulk, make sure not to waste any of it. And you can do this by reducing your meal variants. Using similar ingredients for different meals can save you tons of money. With our three pounds of ground beef, we can use it for spaghetti dinner or hamburgers the next day. The options are endless. Lastly, check the prices on all of your items. Online grocery carts are perfect for this. You can go online and search the item you want and voila, all the prices are there for you to pick the cheapest version. Say you have expensive tastes and want organic free range chicken. Well, great. Our grocery store has a lot of organic free range options and your online shop will easily show you what the cheapest version of this chicken is. This saves you money without reducing the quality of the food. Now, we all have different challenges in life, so maybe incorporating all of these ideas into your diet isn't feasible. But try and use as many tips as possible because doing so can reduce a major burden caused by inflation. For a full shopping cart and meal plan breakdown, check out my budgeting program in the description below. Hey, it's Caleb, the voice of this video. Picture this, you're going through your bank statement and suddenly realize you've been paying for a subscription that you completely forgot about. It's a horrible feeling, believe me, I know. Or imagine spending endless hours on the phone trying to cancel a service you no longer need. Yeah, it's frustrating, but guess what? 
there's a solution. Introducing Rocket Money, the all-in-one budgeting app that's been a game changer for me and many others. Rocket Money isn't just another finance app, it's a lifesaver. I've been using Rocket Money to streamline my subscriptions. With just a few taps, it identifies reoccurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions hassle-free. In fact, the average customer saves up to $740. It's already saved me hundreds. And let's not forget about lowering bills. By snapping a photo of your bill, Rocket Money negotiates for you from internet to cable bills, saving you time and money. So if you're ready to take control of your finances and stop letting your money get taken from you, try Rocket Money for free today by heading to rocketmoney.com slash money makes sense. Try for free or unlock even more features with premium at rocketmoney.com slash money makes sense or in the description below. Huge inflationary pressures have also come from transportation and housing. This is one of those unique markets where it's much cheaper to rent in many areas than to buy. As a matter of fact, if you've been renting the same place out for a few years, you can save money by simply switching apartments or negotiating a better deal with your landlord to stay. The market in rentals is simply much better now than it is in homes or was for rentals in the recent past. Travel costs of all types have also been hit by inflation. Whether you're in the market for a new car, are looking to travel, or simply need to fill up your car with gas, these things are far more expensive now than what they used to be. But what can you do? First, if you're a credit card person, that means you never hold a balance on your credit cards, in which case you can take advantage of signing bonuses and points that come from opening up a new card. For example, Chase Sapphire is currently offering 60,000 points if you sign up for their card. According to Chase, that's equal to $750 in rewards when redeemed through Chase. But you can get a lot more from these points when you transfer to travel partners, such as Hyatt, where your points could award you more than a week's worth of free hotel stays or a few days at a luxury hotel. You can also use these points for international travel with transfer points. These two areas are generally where you get the biggest bang for your buck. If you're going to use a credit card, then learn how to use them to your advantage. Now, if you're in the market for a used car, but it's unaffordable right now, then the best thing to do, if possible, is wait. Used car prices are coming down and have steadily been coming down for a while now. If you can hold onto the ride for a moment, you could get some relief in this area within the next year. Also, don't be ashamed of the car that you drive. As everyone says, no one really cares and what really matters is how stressed you'll be driving in that car, wondering where your next payment will come from. For everything else, be sure to take a good hard look at your finances and see where you can cut back. Subscriptions are a big culprit these days. You can get a subscription for just about everything now. Your food, razors, coffee, cologne, and education. Whatever you're looking to buy, there's likely a subscription for it. These subscriptions aren't always bad though. Many legitimately help you save money and time, all while presenting you with a better product as a result. But there's one category of subscriptions that has gotten a bit out of hand recently at streaming services, unsurprisingly. Initially, streaming started out as a cheaper way to consume content. Maybe you started out by cutting the cord in favor of a singular Netflix subscription. Then subscriptions popped up to get you ad-free services for better online content experiences, so you ended up picking those up too. But as we all should have expected, many of the popular providers caught on to this, and more importantly, felt the pinches their cable contracts proved to be less lucrative. And now there's a streaming service for everything. Apple TV+, Plus, Netflix, Disney, Hulu, ESPN+, Plus, Discovery, HBO Max, well, I guess just called Max now, are some of the most common. And there's a very good chance that you'll subscribe to many, if not all of these services. And those services have not been immune from inflation either. A subscription to all of the mentioned services will run you over $170 a month now. That's about $25 more than the same bundle would have cost you less than a year ago. Cord cutting was supposed to be the cheaper option than cable, but that has evolved into a nightmare. With competing services gatekeeping some of your favorite shows and events in order to win market share. This forces us to make a choice on which subscription services we'd like. Or for some, maybe just cut them all up and return to one cable source. Now, with the rise of inflation and the subsequent fight to combat it, we've seen an increase in the interest rate of your cash. Previously returning pennies on the dollar, you can now find accounts like the SoFi High Yield Savings account that gets you 4.6% on your money. This is great for your emergency fund or any cash you'll need in the near future, but note that it's not absolutely fantastic when you consider inflation. 
With the elevated inflation rates that we're seeing, keeping your money in a high yield savings account makes it mildly good investment wise. At the very least, doing so preserves your capital and there are many accounts that provide you with at least one to 3% a year in return after you account for inflation. In the same period though, the S&P 500 has returned 30% and outperformed inflation by over 25%. Sure, a high yield savings account is okay, but it doesn't change the fact that the stock market is still the best way to battle inflation and grow your wealth. Those who were invested in the market saw far greater returns than those who were sitting on the sidelines during the inflationary period. Now, sure, these people look smart in the beginning, but historically proved itself that the stock market beat out cash yet again. Of course, it's not enough just to be invested. You need to make sure your investments are diversified. Inflationary presents a strain on some industries, but could be a boom for others. Being diversified makes sure that you are on the wrong side of the stick. Invest in diversified baskets of stocks such as the S&P 500 or target date retirement funds that provide exposure to large cap, small cap, international stocks, and bonds. Now the next tip is hard for some, but you need to be regularly working at increasing your income. Just like cash erodes over time due to inflation, the value of your paycheck will also erode because of these very same factors. In your current job, you should seek to ask for a raise each year that at least equals inflation. If your employer isn't providing you with this at the very least, then you should consider other jobs. Some of the best advice I've received was to regularly apply for jobs. See what's out there and gauge your worth. Finding a job sometimes is also like finding love. It's a numbers game and you just need to be putting yourself out there until you find the right one. I have plenty of videos on this, but in this day and age, there are many online courses and certifications that you can take advantage of to increase your income. Look around and see if there's any way to boost the value to your current employer or your future employer. Just like many things surrounding money, this is only a moment in time and we'll likely get back to a place where prices feel normal again. Make sure to check out all the resources linked in the description below as they are what I use or would use in specific situations, including the best budgeting program in the history of the internet.